Merry Valentine's Day, bitches. Let's talk about Blue Spring Ride, a very basic manga that has a formula many other shoujo, in my opinion, should follow. I first read and watched Blue Spring Ride in 2015. Since then, I've made it a hobby, nay, a tradition, to reread the manga every single year on Valentine's Day. And the main aspect I want to touch on, as to why I believe more shoujo should follow in its footsteps, is the mundane. What I mean by this is that a lot of shoujo follow into more fantastical settings. Shows like Special A and Oron have unrealistic high schools. Shows like Fruits Basket follow into actual fantasy lore. Blue Spring Ride, on the other hand, is a show that follows very average day-to-day -day life stories. Nothing is too out of this world. And yet, I'm so intrigued by the story and the characters because they flourish in this day-to-day -day life. And this ties into what I believe to be Blue Spring Ride's strongest aspect the protagonist, Futaba. If you watch my videos, then you know I am quite wary of Mary Sue characters. A very easy way to sidestep making your character Mary Sue is to give them some obvious flaws and just patch them up as the show goes along. Futaba has very minor flaws that are much more realistic and weave their way into most aspects of the plot. The first flaw you really notice about Futaba is that she's a very weak sense of self. She's willing to sacrifice how she treats others for the sake of self-preservation. And I find it refreshing that Futaba isn't overly selfless like a lot of other shoujo protagonists are, because this is something actual high schoolers are going to relate to. And she also is someone who doesn't really speak up for herself and lets others make decisions too much. So these are very minor but real flaws. That's why they're there throughout the entirety of the plot and never really get addressed in a way that makes them disappear. So do I think all shoujo should give up on their fantastical settings and focus on everyday flaws and plots and characters? No. Do I think we need more of this and do I think they should follow the formula Blue Spring Ride has set up? Absolutely. Am I going to sit here and call Blue Spring Ride a feminist masterpiece? Absolutely not, that would be misleading. Am I going to give credit where credit is due? Yes. Let's start with the bar being on the fucking ground. There's no pervy best friend character. Kominato would have fit this role very well if that's what they wanted him to do. However, they had him be someone who drinks respect women juice for breakfast every single day. Now that that's out of the way, let's overanalyze baby cakes. What was that? Was someone asking for... Summary. So Futaba is really chill in middle school, has her friends, whatever. She's a crush on Ko because he's all cute and stuff. Then he leaves, that's besides the point. Now she's here, she's with her best friends, and they start to notice boys like her a lot. They don't like that. So they're like, all right, you go over here, we we'll go over here. We're bullying you, essentially. And she's all like, wow, that sucks. Goes through middle school being bullied. Then she goes to high school, decides to reset her image, becomes someone much more over the top, tries to get rid of what she calls her feminine charm. Is this abiding by many gender stereotypes? Absolutely. Am I going to ignore that for now? Absolutely. And all of her friends are like, wow, thank God you're not more feminine or else we'd not hang out with you. She notices there's a girl in class named Yuri. Yuri's cutesy. All the boys like Yuri, which means obviously all the girls hate her. Futaba doesn't say anything and is essentially a bystander in this. It's a metaphor. Futaba realizes that by not sticking up for Yuri, she's essentially enabling what happened to her in middle school. And obviously because she's our protagonist and we need to start off the plot liking her, she decides to stick up for Yuri and essentially stick up for herself. Is this laden with negative gender stereotypes surrounding how girls fight with each other and are catty over the attention of boys? Yes. Am I hoping to believe this was meant to be satirical and that the way Futaba acts with Shuko and Yuri is more representative of actual female friendship? Fingers crossed. I believe Futaba's self-journey starts with her conversation with Yuri, not Ko. What I really love is that Yuri says something that Futaba never really thought herself. She says, even if I'm acting cutesy for boys' attention, what's wrong with that? How is that anyone's business? You can tell how cathartic it is for Futaba to defend Yuri to her friends, because what she's really doing is defending who she was in middle school. Yuri doesn't care about that, though, because she still sees it as Futaba sticking up for her. From then on, they have a very solidified friendship. Even when they find out they like the same guy, they assure each other that their friendship will always come first. And this isn't just talk, it's something that they prove throughout the entirety of the story. And I despise love triangles. But for some odd reason, this is the first time I think the love triangle does more to solidify two girls' friendship than to advance any type of romance. And maybe this is because this entire storyline takes up less than one-fifth of the story. In fact, by the time Yuri confesses to Ko, she's already aware of the fact that Ko likes Futaba. 
She decides, however, to confess because she fears if anything ever happens between Ko and Futaba, she'd feel resentful towards Futaba if she didn't confess now and take her shot. And of course, after she confesses to Ko and he rejects her confession, Futaba comes running over because she misheard a call and thinks that Yuri's injured. And in this moment, Yuri has a little anime tear escape her eyes and she says, you know what? Things will be okay because I have my best friend by my side. And I love that. So while I usually hate love triangles, in this case, I believe it serves the purpose of solidifying Futaba and Yuri's friendship, letting them know that no boy will ever come between the bond they share. And a little detail I notice is that no matter what drama occurs in this group of five, the three girls always have each other's backs. They always support each other and they're always rooting for each other. And maybe the whole time, this is what the author was trying to say female friendship is like. So then why in the world is Narumi a character in this story? One last thing to note under the topic of gender and presentation is that once Futaba starts to hang out with her new friend group, she decides to become her past, authentic feminine self. However, she starts to realize that if she's not acting to fit a character, she's neither the super feminine person she used to be, or the not at all feminine person she's tried to become. Instead, she exists just as herself. And this, I think, is something a lot of high schoolers can relate to. We either tried so hard to be not like the other girls, or tried overly hard to perform femininity. However, what I really enjoy is that the show demonstrates it's not always somewhere in between either. Between Yuri, Futaba, and Shuko, they all lay somewhere on this scale of femininity that is very authentic and true to themselves. And adding variety to your characters is the hallmark of good writing. <laughs> So if the plot of Blue Spring Ride is rather mundane and focused in everyday life, and if Futaba and Ko like each other since the beginning, why does it take 40-something chapters for them to get together? Unlike most shoujo, the story and the plot focus primarily on Ko's family rather than Futaba's. In fact, you know next to nothing about Futaba's family other than the fact she's pretty chill with them. And this is when you start to realize that even if the plot focuses on everyday feelings, it's not going to be boring and it in fact can be quite deep and real to many people. Ko isn't reserved for no reason. He feels intense guilt over the loss of his mother, and his friends, particularly Komenado, try to tell him, hey, you're allowed to still feel grief while feeling happy and trying to enjoy your youth. In this way, I think Blue Spring Ride is trying to tell us that friendship is just as important as romance, which I think a lot of shoujo tends to forget about. And this is when Futaba and Ko's biggest issue comes into play. Just like Ko says, it seems like everything with them is always mistiming. Because just when Ko starts to feel comfortable, and starts to laugh, and starts to enjoy friendship, Narumi comes in. She's Ko's old classmate from Nagasaki. She lost her father about the same time Ko lost his mother. So what's majorly fucked up about this? Narumi uses the fact that she lost her father as a way to get with Ko. Alright, let's unpack this. A 16 or 17 year old girl loses her father. Her mother doesn't want her to live in the house anymore, so now she pretty much doesn't have a family. The rest of the main cast, with presumably functional at-home lives, now tell Ko, you better drop her because she's making you sad. I get what she's meant to represent in the story. You shouldn't constantly feel guilt, and that it's okay to feel happy even if something bad happened to you. And that you shouldn't sacrifice your own mental health for the sake of helping others. But damn, couldn't they at least invite her to hang out? And my biggest gripe with the story is that they try to go along with this. Narumi tells Ko that she's straight up using their dead parents as a way to get closer to him and wants him to completely get rid of the rest of his friends and focus only on her because she's the only one who'll understand him. It's emotional manipulation at its finest, but why are we doing this in the first place? Ko does end up kind of telling her that he will never talk to her again. That aside, I do like the way that this story arc concluded. The five of them go to see a sunset one that's meant to be a callback to the earlier sunrise. And Ko says that while he'll always associate sunsets with his mother and sickness, at least he can also form a new memory in addition of him being with his friends and smiling. And that's kind of what it is. Sorrow can coexist with joy. So if all of this about Ko's past was so well written, why did we need her? We ignore all that though. This part of the story is still really interesting in the fact that it's overarching and by no means episodic. And I think a lot of shoujo fear that their issues should be episodic and compartmentalized. You have the issue, it's solved, and you move on to the next one. Blue Spring Ride, with most of their character stories and arcs, have them all blend together and overlap throughout the entirety of the story. It also states that overt selflessness and bottling your pain is not a good thing. 
It's okay to prioritize your own happiness and you shouldn't feel guilty about this. In fact, your friends can be there the entire time to help you on this journey. Like I said, I am not a seasoned shoujo fan. However, from what I've seen, there's always boy A and boy B, and boy B, the one who she doesn't end up with, is usually the healthier option. In this case, I disagree. The cold-hearted and reserved male character trope is usually meant to make the female viewer believe, ooh, if I met a man like that, I could fix him, or oh wow, he's mean to everyone but me, isn't that charming? And at first glance, you might think Blue Spring Ride has this type of male character in Ko. However, after like, what, seven reads of this? I am here to tell you that I think Ko is a healthier option for Futaba than Kikuchi. I have some points, points ready to present. More than Kikuchi, Ko recognizes Futaba's agency above all else. While Kikuchi constantly asks out Futaba, even when she says she's not interested in him, Ko recognizes that Futaba has the final choice. Even when Kikuchi promises Ko that he will not lose and that he will win over Futaba, Ko hits him with this little number. Yeah, boom. Well, let's take that and move that to the side. Now let's talk about why Ko is a good example of how you can still make a reserved male character not a complete asshole. Have your angsty boy treat all characters equally asshole-ish to assure that this is his personality and not his way of flirting. Give him actual reasons for acting reserved to demonstrate that just because you're reserved, it doesn't automatically make you an asshole. You can be an asshole if you want, but that's beside the point. Have more than just the female protagonist break through his cold exterior. In this case, Koyunato is just as important in Ko's progression as a character as Futaba is. And parallel to real, actual high schoolers, it's quite common for there to be lapses in character. Even if Ko's trying to put up a cold front, there are times where he laughs and loses himself to the mood. I cannot stress this one enough. Have the guy be nice to the female protagonist at times. It doesn't have to be his whole thing, he doesn't have to be an overly nice guy. Ko is often very nice to Futaba, he tries to make her happy, and even when he's being his teasing self, if he finds that his teasing goes too far and he might have potentially hurt her feelings, he always immediately apologizes. And hey, I occasionally like a good cold-hearted protagonist, but I like the more realistic take on it, like Ko is. Someone who's not always just a dick, but it's just a fun part of his personality to be a little cold at times. However, before I go on, I do want to point out that there is one very uncomfortable part of the manga where he does one of those, if I were any other guy, I could have taken advantage of you right here things, and I don't like it, and if there was one thing I could take out of this entire story, it would definitely be that. And that does remind me that we do need to talk about the icky aspects of Blue Spring Ride this man right here. When I first watched slash read this story back when I was, what, 16? I thought it was kind of okay for a high school student to have a crush on the teacher because in my mind, when I was reading this for some godforsaken reason, I thought he really had nothing to do with it. I thought he was like, eh, whatever, I'll continue minding my own business. But now, and I hate to say this because it makes me feel old, I am closer to his age than I am to his age. And not only should he have completely abandoned being near them once he found out about her feelings towards him, but he should have like not been near high school students to begin with. Even worse, I'm pretty sure about one or two times ago while reading it, I realized, wait, is he implying he has feelings towards her? This isn't some minor character flaw either. This is a 25 year old admitting that he's like, got the hots for a 16 year old student. That's disgusting. <laughs> And one thing that I really think Blue Spring Ride sets itself apart from other shoujo regarding is its ability to utilize its secondary characters in extremely interesting ways. Each of these secondary characters have their own plot lines and character arcs that don't revolve around the two main protagonists, Futaba and Ko. Yuri has her relationship with Uchimiya, Shuko has her own feelings towards Tanaka Sensei, and her growing feelings towards Kominato. Kominato has his feelings for Shuko since day one, and that's always a focus, but he also has a story arc with the lady who owned a candy shop who lived near him, and it's kind of sad. And if Blue Spring Ride didn't shake up the focus a little bit, I think I'd grow bored of Futaba and Ko. But because they place emphasis on the stories of the other characters, I'm more interested when Ko and Futaba are the focus. Not only this, but I found myself squealing over the platonic relationships just as much as the romantic ones. I love them. And throughout the 49 chapters of the manga, every single character has a different take on Futaba and Ko's relationship and a different opinion of whether or not they're good together. But Kominato the entire time hard stands their relationship. 
He's the relatable self-insert. Am I saying every shoujo needs a character just like Kominato? No. Am I saying he's a great replacement for the typical pervy best friend trope? Yes. And the first time Kominato sticks up for Ko and defends him, you see the utter shock on Ko's face. He's not used to having a friend willing to support him no matter what. And because of this, I do think that Kominato is just as much a factor in Ko's development as Futaba. And I think it's refreshing to see male friends in a shoujo support each other rather than act as rivals. In fact, it's a very healthy depiction of male friendship. But what really confuses me, and I mean like really confuses me about this manga, is the focus on honesty. Even when it's completely unnecessary, the characters will admit their ulterior motives or the fact that they still feel guilty about something or that they did something that they feel like the other person should have known about even if it's something most people wouldn't think twice about just withholding. And I'm still unsure if this focus on honesty is the author's way of telling us her own personal philosophies, that she thinks everyone should be completely honest and open and tell everyone everything. That or it might just be an easy way of telling us what the characters are thinking because sometimes manga is hard to understand between who's saying what, who's thinking what, because you don't really have one specific narrator telling the story. Either way, she put it in the story, so I'm going to think about it like it's part of the story's intention. Maybe it's meant to deconstruct the earlier ideas that self-preservation at the cost of hurting others is never a good thing. Just be true, be open, and be yourself, and your friends will still be there for you if you're, you know, not a completely shitty person. And honestly, for all the characters except Kominato, being completely forward and honest isn't as easy as you would think. The story constantly has the characters saying, hey, I wanted to face you, or I feared facing you honestly. And since this lovely scene right here, Budaba starts to develop feelings for Ko. Again. And she tries to deny it at first, because her whole thing is that she doesn't care about boys and she just wants to be one of the girls. Which, once again, going back, not really sure what that intention was either. When they were first here as kids, it was raining and he offered her his gym shirt to dry off with, blah blah blah. But this time, she shows up and he's there and he's all like, <clears throat> It's really raining suddenly, isn't it? And she's all like, Oh my god, that is Ko. What if I fall in love with him all over again? Futaba has to learn to face herself throughout the first few chapters. This leads into her having to face Yuri, which leads into her having to face Ko, having to face Kikuchi. There's always someone everyone needs to face. What's the meaning behind this? And like I said, Blue Spring Ride is by no means a completely healthy and functional manga. No, no, no. But I do think that if a lot of other shoujo followed suit in focusing on friendship and community more so than just relationships, then the parts of their story that do focus on relationships will come much more naturally and be less stale and forced. To tie back to earlier, what I really enjoy about this manga and this anime above all else is how real the characters feel. They are very realistic for what high schoolers would be thinking of at the time, but it also goes towards darker paths of what reality can be. I like that the show focuses on friendship just as much as the romance, but I also like that the romance doesn't feel unhealthy. Ko is genuinely nice towards Futaba, even at times he's not making it obvious. Futaba comes to terms with the fact that she likes Ko when she sets herself up with this weird ultimatum. She gets on the train with him and they're about to go home, and then she gets off and says, oh, I forgot something at the school. She tells herself that if he gets off the train, then she'll still stay in love with him because it shows he cares. If he stays on the train, she tells herself that that means he's not that interested and she'll give up. And it's this whole dramatic scene, and in the anime it's gorgeous because they've got this dramatic music going on, the wind's blowing, and she's like, get off the train! And her telling us either way that she wants him to get off the train shows that she wants to like him regardless. I also enjoy that while Blue Spring Ride doesn't stray away from genuine, serious, real-world topics, they also have a little bit of lightheartedness to them. I think the animation style is stunning because I haven't talked yet about the actual core aspects of the show's production. On that note, look at this flawless animation. Gorgeous style, and yet they'll use it to make faces like this. And if you read the manga, you can tell that the author wrote and drew the same way. Very gorgeous, very stunning, very typical shoujo whimsical, and yet would still draw her face like this occasionally. On top of that, they also employ this like watercolor type of technique whenever it's a flashback, which, you know, not only serves as the purpose of making the past seem further away, more blurred, but also is just a stunning addition. And the music. The music. There is this one song that plays whenever something dramatic, but like, you know, not too dramatic happens, and it is gorgeous. Not only that, but the opening song is fun, and it's fresh, and it's upbeat, 
but it's also very nostalgic for me. That might be a personal thing, but it's got this like older shoujo feel. And I'm not someone who's afraid of saying a show or a movie or a book I like has bad pacing. However, I do think Blue Spring Ride has perfect pacing. It's, I believe, 49 chapters and 12 episodes. If you are someone who craves completion in the anime, then you might have some issues. However, if you read the manga, it not only comes to a completion upon her choosing what to do, who she ends up with, and what happens, but there are also additional chapters that come after that that's just exploring what life is after getting together as a couple, with setting up your friends perhaps, with what happens to the characters, where are they now? But it doesn't go too far into the point it gets dull and boring and feels like it went on too much. I think it ends perfectly. 49 chapters to me was exactly the amount of time they needed to tell this particular story. And I could be pulling this out of my ass, but I get the feeling that this is more popular in Japan than it is internationally. There's no dub, which is fine, I enjoyed this sub very much, but there's also a live action film, which was kind of cute. It follows the manga a bit more closely than the anime does, or at least it delves further into the manga's plot than the anime could with its 12 episode limit. In conclusion, the romance is focused on, but not more than the friendship. In fact, I think the friendship aids in the progression of the romance. All of the characters, even the auxiliary and secondary characters, have their own unique personalities and plots that make the story feel much more real and lively. The mundane aspects of life are focused on more than the fantastical aspects, but yet somehow that makes the mundane aspects of the show that much more interesting and close to home. The manga is well-paced and well-drawn and well-written. The anime is gorgeous, has a lovely soundtrack, and beautifully done pacing as well. Yes, there were bad parts to the story. However, if you hone in on what the story did well, I think we can apply that to shoujo as a whole, and we can take from it that there are things you can focus on besides making a perfect protagonist and her perfect romance with a guy who doesn't give a fuck about her, but secretly does. Looking forward to reading it February 2022.